Colleen from Keeping the Peace Defensive Handgun Training for Women, and today we're going to be talking about defensive flashlights. I have my husband Dave Barnett here from Elzetta Tactical Lighting, and he's going to give us some details about why it's important to carry a flashlight and how to pick a good one. What are some of the reasons why a woman should carry a defensive flashlight? Well, you know, the first one is just going to be just general situational awareness. If you're in a situation where you walk into your car at night, and certainly you want to avoid these situations if possible, but if the situation is you're walking out, your, your car's in a dark location, it simply gives you some situational awareness while you're walking to your car, um, scan the area, look for any kind of threats, any kind of abnormalities, scan around your car, threat may be anything from a fluid leak, you have oil or antifreeze on the ground, tells you there's something wrong with your vehicle, um, there might be a skunk or some other uh, uh, animal or something that's a threat, or there might be an assailant, a potential attacker or something, and you want to be situationally aware. So that's one of the main things. There's just a convenience too that you can just you know look through a glove box, look through your purse, those kind of convenience things as well. And then you know if, if things really go bad and, and there is a real threat, a good defensive flashlight is just that. It can be a true defensive tool. Besides just lighting up something, I know that. Mm -hmm. A lot of your flashlights have what we call the crenellated bezel. Um, what would be a way that that could be an application for someone? Well, absolutely. The crenellated bezel is one of the options we use that makes it um, a strike implement. And the way it's made, it's not sharp enough that it's going to cut you under normal handling. Um, but it kind of acts as a hole saw. If you were to impact someone with that and then twist, acts as a hole saw, grabs the flesh, rips. Um, it can be a, a very effective uh, strike implement. What are some of the characteristics that a woman should look for when she's choosing a defensive flashlight? You know, I would look for, for two major aspects when you're looking for a good defensive flashlight that you can truly trust your life to. One is extreme durability. And you're going to find a couple things that are going to lead to that. One is you want your electronics to be fully potted. We're talking LED flashlights here, not the older technology of incandescent flashlights. You definitely want an LED flashlight. And you want to make sure all of the electronics are potted. What that means is there's an epoxy that goes around all the circuit board, locks all the components in place. Normally on a, a flashlight that doesn't have potted um, electrical components, it's by far the weak link. If you were to use this as an impact tool, if you were to drop it hard, it could break the circuit board and your flashlight's done. So you want to make sure you've got fully potted electronics. Um, you'll also want to look for, for high durability, a thick lens, not just a little cover lens with a simple reflector. You want something with a thick optical lens. On Elzetta flashlights, we have a half inch thick acrylic optical lens. You know, acrylic's the same thing that makes shark tanks out if you go to the aquariums at the zoo. So, you know, you can literally, if you watch some of our videos, you know, we see you, you can see us using our flashlights as hammers to drive nails repeatedly. That's the kind of durability you want to look for. Second thing you want to look for is a simple user interface. So many flashlights on the market, you have to know Morse code to operate them. You know, click, click, press, hold to go through all kinds of crazy different modes. In high stress, when your adrenaline's pumping, things are going fast, you want to be able to just have an absolute reliable, easy to understand user interface. We make dual mode tail caps. We have a high low, we have a high strobe. Sometimes people ask us, well, you can make a three mode or a four mode or a 20 million mode flashlight. We always tell them, absolutely not. Humans are physiologically well suited to make binary decisions under stress. That is where there's two options yes or no, fight or flight, high or low, high or stroke. But as soon as you put in a third or more options, your error rate and your reaction time go up exponentially. Mm -hmm. So we want to keep it very simple to binary operation. Also, you want decoupled operation where on and off and mode selection are different. Not one button that does this whole, you know, does everything. And you have to know Morse code to click through all these crazy modes. So this one, boom, you've got high on off, which is the tail cap, rotate it and you go to high low. If we had a high strobe, it would work the same way. Very simple, very intuitive. You can work under high stress with one hand, no problem. So you want to look at that extreme durability, something you can really trust your life to, and you know a very simple user interface. Very critical for a defensive flashlight. You're not going to find that for something $20 made in China. This is something if you want to invest, uh, you know, trust your life to it, you want to make an investment and get a quality light. Seems to me that that would come into play also if you're using your light with a weapon, which we talk about that a lot. Absolutely. If you had all those different modes to select through and you were trying to use it 
with your handgun, not only are you trying to remember, okay, how am I going to hold my handgun and my light, but well, how do I click through all that stuff? So Absolutely. A lot of times you may want several quick bursts of light, and if you have a multi-mode flashlight that has click through, when you try those multiple bursts of light, you're changing modes and things are going crazy. You want simple and intuitive. Um, just at the low light training that we did last month, I had several people going through the course in the dark and they accidentally clicked onto a strobe setting Absolutely. and they, it kind of freaked them out yeah. over time hitting the target. Yeah, what works well in the showroom is very different from what works well in high stress. Right. Would a defensive flashlight be considered sufficient for defense? Well, certainly a defensive flashlight is no substitute for a firearm or other deadly weapon but it's an absolute necessity as far as being part of your overall paraphernalia that you're going to use for self-defense. And there's one area that's very significant where it's superior to a deadly weapon or even a less lethal weapon. Uh, for example, you might call it a threshold of certainty regarding a threat. In other words, if you're going to deploy your handgun, you better be absolutely certain that you are in imminent danger of your life or, you know, depending on your state, severe bodily injury, something like that. Similarly, if you're going to use less lethal, such as a pepper spray or a taser or something, you better make sure there's a real threat imminent on your life. Um, whereas with a flashlight, you just might see something that makes you a little uneasy, somebody looks a little creepy, guy kind of freaks you out a little bit, and you can just, boom, get out the flashlight, maybe combine that with a verbal command, hey, what are you doing? Hey, quit following me, whatever it might be, and uh, you know, no harm, no foul and you're going to let that person know that you're aware, you're probably going to temporarily blind them a little bit, they're going to you know, be seeing spots for several seconds, which gives you time to get out of that situation. Nobody's going to accuse me, hey, she assaulted me, all you do is shine a flashlight at them. So you've got that great advantage, whereas it might be a situation where there's no way you could justify drawing a deadly weapon, but you can certainly justify getting out a flashlight. So from that standpoint, it will get you out of a lot of situations that won't progress to the point where you might have to go to a deadly weapon. But if things go really bad and you do have to draw that deadly weapon, again, you're gonna want that handheld flashlight to simply you know, be able to follow the four basic safety rules. You know, one of them is to know your target and what's beyond it. Well, in nighttime situation when it's dark, if you don't have a flashlight, you're not gonna know that target and what's beyond it. Similarly, say, so, well, maybe I'll just get one of those pistol lights. Well, one of the four basic safety rules is never point your gun at something you're not willing to destroy. So you're not gonna be able to use a pistol light only um, you're going to need that handheld as well. So it's an absolute essential part of you know, all the gear you're going to need on you at all times you know, to be able to, to be safe. Again, a lot of opportunities to use this when you wouldn't be justified using a deadly weapon. We're going to be doing a contest linked to this video where we're going to be giving away an LZ flashlight, a ZFL M60 CS2D. You want to tell them what CS2D is? Sure. The LZ flashlights have the ZFL M60 as the main part number. There's a four digit suffix. Each of those digits corresponds to a part of the flashlight. We build them all to order. They're all made in the USA. The first digit of the suffix is the bezel. So we've got a CS2D. The C stands for crinolated. So you've got this little scallop bezel. It's a great striking implement. The S, the second digit in the part number suffix, is the lens. The S is standard lens. So you're going to get the standard acrylic lens. Two just means it's got a two cell body, so it's nice and compact. Um, works really well, carry a purse or a pocket. And then the um, D you said was the final one, you're doing a CS2D, is simply our code for a high low tail cap. So you've got high and low simply by rotating the tail cap. So that's the one you're going to give. It's got a retail value of $195. Okay. This is how the contest is going to work. You're going to need to subscribe to the Keeping the Peace YouTube channel and then hop over to the LZ Tactical Lighting channel, subscribe to them. And then we need you to submit a video response. We need you to use the same title as our video with VR in parenthesis at the end of the title and tell us why you need an LZ Tactical flashlight. We're going to close entries on Friday the 14th of December and then we will together choose a winner. We will um, announce the winner on the 21st, so hopefully you will have the flashlight in your hands by Christmas time.